In today's video, I'll show you how to train LoRa. So what is LoRa first of all and why do we need to train it? If you ever tried to generate images with consistent character, pose or object in stable diffusion, you might have noticed that it's not that easy. And LoRa helps to solve this problem. LoRa stands for Low Rank Adaptation and this model uses Low Rank Adaptation technology to fine-tune uh, stable diffusion checkpoints. LoRa makes it easier to train stable diffusion on such concepts as characters, poses, objects, or even just different artwork styles. And after you train your model, you can export it and reuse or share with other people. So you can find plenty of LoRa models on such websites like Civit AI, but the best fun is to create your LoRa model yourself. It requires smaller amount of pictures and lower effort compared to other models. So if you have your dataset ready, you can do it in like 10 or 20 minutes. And that's what we're gonna do now. So the first and the longest part of LoRa training is preparing the dataset. You will need 15 to 35 pictures of your subject. They must be in different stands, poses, conditions, whatever. Uh, pictures should not be the same. And uh, you can see I prepared already a few pictures of my parrot Dracaris and we're gonna train Laura for Dracaris the parrot. I know that in my previous video we were talking about uh, not safe for work content uh, but I decided that I'm not gonna use uh, such kind of photos in uh, my Laura because YouTube wouldn't be happy uh, with that and instead I will just use my parrot uh, to train the Laura. So you see, I tried to pick different pictures in different uh, backgrounds and places and even on my shoulder or like on my desk. I picked uh, 25 pictures of Dracaris and I cropped them to 512 pictures um, to the square size as you see. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, in, uh, there are plenty of uh, graphic editors um, that you can use online or just like uh, applications on your laptop. I just use default uh, Mac preview tool. There is a adjust size menu here so you can adjust your size. You can also select an area on the image and then crop it. So uh, that's what I did to my photos and then I just went and described every picture. Uh, first I placed the specific tag for my LoRa, custom tag, custom word that will trigger the LoRa. And then I just described what uh, is on the picture. So if you look at the uh, second picture, it's just Dracarys mirror and his wooden perch, not much to see. So here in the text file, I added all these uh, words and I did it with every image. So I have 25 images and 25 TXT documents that are all named the same. So first image named one and the txt file named one. So uh, now when we have our images and uh, descriptions for them ready, uh, we need to place them in specific directory. You can see that this directory where these pictures are living now, it uh, named 10 underscore Dracarys the part, where 10 is the amount of repetitions that we're gonna use to train the model and Dracar is a parrot is just the name of my Laura. And if you go uh, one level up, there is just uh, the name of my Laura, the root folder for the Laura. So uh, that's the initial preparations before we actually started to train the model. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, to find a correct notebook to train uh, the Laura. I used Kohai SS and I used the notebook from the user uh, Lina Q R U F. I am not sure how to pronounce it, so um, I'll just open it here. That's the original um, notebook that I used, and it worked for me. So uh, I'll leave the link uh, to this notebook below, so you can also use it. You need to go to the file and uh, save the copy in your Google Drive. So let's do that and it will open a new tab uh, with uh, the copy of this notebook. Why I prefer to save the copy in my uh, Google Drive? Uh, the original notebook can change, something can uh, be updated there or something can break and it might stop working for you. It's always better to have the working version of your um, 
notebook so I'm going to uh, rename it demo Laura training uh, and I will also give you the link to this one uh, to this version that I saved on my Google Drive because I don't know when you will watch this tutorial uh, and maybe at the moment when you're gonna watch it it will be uh, the original one will change and there will be different cells and it can be confusing next what you're gonna do is just to go through the cells of this uh, notebook and uh, run them uh, one after another with our configuration for our LoRa uh, we will not run all of these cells because some of them are optional and we don't want to use them So I'll just show you the necessary cells that you need to run the first one will install uh, Python dependencies uh, Just don't forget to click this um, Checkbox mount drive it will connect the notebook to your Google Drive where you will save for uh, your LoRa So it will ask you to connect and to give the permissions. So that's what you need to do I'm allowing it and now it will take some time while it is running and installing the, uh, the dependencies so the execution of the first cell uh, completed and the second one is uh, file explorer I'm not sure what is it for because it didn't work for me uh, you can of course still try to run it but I don't think it really needed um, so we are going to the second section where we can download our model so uh, we have these um, uh, drop down with different uh, models you can choose which one to download I will use the uh, stable diffusion first dot X uh, model um, and I will use uh, just the stable diffusion one uh, there are different ones like uh, any Laura and anime and etc uh, but we don't want to uh, generate anime this time we want to generate we want to train it on just uh, basic stable diffusion model so we will download this model we can also download custom model from hugging face but for this tutorial we don't need to do that so we will skip this second cell we also will download this VAE it is optional but let's do that let's download stable diffusion one and just note that after we downloaded uh, models it shows this path so please save it somewhere in case if you accidentally refresh your collab uh, because you'll need it in the next uh, steps so save both of these links we will uh, define our uh, local train uh, directory uh, so this is uh, the default path in this notebook but uh, it didn't work for me uh, so what I had to do I had to edit it a little bit uh, so it uh, looks not in the content folder but in drive slash my drive then I can access this uh, directory on my Google Drive so I'm uh, pointing uh, training data directory here it is done then the next one unzip data set our data set is not zipped so we don't need to do that image scrapper again we don't need to do it we have our images prepared data cleaning we skip it so um, this captioning as well we already captioned everything uh, so we just go to the custom tag and in custom tag we have few settings there is a, an extension we have txt file so we'll, we can just leave it like that our custom tag will be drag caris the parrot and here we will specify all and uh, we have to run this section of course and then we're going to training model uh, and before we actually start executing this let's go to our, our google drive and you'll see uh, this uh, laura folder with a few other folders so in this train data folder you can upload the data set that we prepared so I'll just upload my Dracarys the Parrot folder here if you go back to Laura you see there are a few other folders the regular da uh, data is a folder for pictures that are not your parrot and you can add them if you want but it's not uh, required I will not add any and the output is the folder where you actually get your Loras 
So <clears throat> now when we uh, uploaded the pictures, we can continue with our notebook. So model config, uh, we can add the project name. It's gonna be again, Dracaris the Parrot. And pre-train uh, model name or path here we can paste the path that we got here where we downloaded our model so copy this and go and paste it here and it's this, the same you can do for your VAE again uh, going here copy this file and starting here and the output dir we also need to fix because you remember i changed the path here where it was our training data so i added this piece drive my drive and i'm going to do the same for this one i'll hit this checkbox and i'll run this model config so it tells you that it is, uh, yeah. So the next uh, part is data set config. Data set repeats is 10 and we said that we want 10 repeats. So we leave it as it is. Activation word, uh, it's gonna be our Dracaris the parrot. And caption extension again, txt. Resolution, here you should set it to your uh, picture's resolution. You can see it starts on 5, 112 and you can be even bigger even higher but i will leave 512 because it's just gonna be it is gonna be faster yeah i'm going to leave it uh 512 because it's just gonna be faster um and yeah we're gonna run it as well and the next one is laura config a uh, network category yes we're uh, leaving uh laura here these uh, convert the IM and convert alpha. We don't care about them because they are for other models. For LoRa, we can uh, set this network DIM and network alpha. So I'd set it. I'd set it to one, to eight, both of them. Um, these uh, options you can experiment with and figure out what is working best for you. I'll set it to these ones for now and. Uh, this one I will not specify, I will leave it empty. Then optimizer config, I will leave everything on default, I think. Yeah, so let's run it as well. And then training config, uh, we will leave uh, we will leave low RAM checked and sampler. Um, you can choose different samplers here. It is the same samplers that you see on Stable Diffusion Web UI. I will leave it uh, DDIM because this sampler works faster. Uh, the way it works, it can just uh, skip uh, steps uh, during the training. We still don't lose much in quality of training, so I'm going to use this one. Number of epochs 10, batch size four train batch size six and we can leave them as it is with the exception of this one uh, save every uh, n epoch time um, this will uh, save your model your LoRa after every repeat of training uh, and we don't need it probably to set to one because we don't want to save it every time maybe we could save it to like two at least um, so um, save model as save tensors yeah everything else we can leave the next uh, cell is the actual training just um, hit this button and if everything is configured right you will see the output here that uh, will tell you that your training is in progress and will put, uh, output some logs and stuff if you see errors here on this step it means that you probably misconfigured some paths uh, in the cells before so just go and double check everything you see it found my 25 image files uh, so everything is right and it started to train them it will take a few minutes so i'll pause the video and we'll back to you later when it is done our training is finished and now we can go to our uh, google drive and in output folder you will find these files 
these are files with the numbers. It is uh, from different epoch steps. Uh, and we are interested in the last one, Drakari Zeparat Safe Tensors. And we're going to download that. And um, then we go into our uh, web UI. Uh, you remember in the last video, I showed you how to upload LoRa's here. So we are going to models and we're going to LoRa. And in this uh, LoRa folder, we just uh, upload our Dracaris the Parrot LoRa. Okay, I just want to rename it because it has this version number. It was not the first one that I saved on my downloads folder. So we uploaded our LoRa in the right place. Uh, now we can just go to our collab notebooks and uh, find the one that we used in previous video and uh, run it. So again, uh, and yeah, don't forget to disconnect uh, your Kahaya notebook because if it is stays connected, it uses your collab resources. So I'll disconnect this one and I go and run our stable diffusion web UI. If you are not familiar with this one, just go and check out my uh, previous video where I explain how to install and run Stable Diffusion on Google Collab. So uh, again, we are just uh, running all the stuff and uh, here I will select uh, 1.5 Stable Diffusion version because this one was the one that we trained the uh, LoRa for. Of course, you can train it for the Stable Diffusion Excel but uh, it will just take more time to train and to generate images. And for this tutorial, I want things to be quick. Okay, so we are waiting for ourselves to execute. And when the last one will be ready, we can test our LoRa. Okay, so um, our, um, our stable diffusion UI is ready, up and running. Let's open it. Uh, and here, uh, if you go to LoRa tab, uh, we can see our LoRa's available here and there is our Dracari Zepard LoRa and if you click on it, uh, you see it adds the uh, trigger here to text to image um, field. So uh, let's try and uh, generate something with our new LoRa and I'll add uh, negative uh, prompts as well. And uh, then uh, uh, I want to go and find some nice uh, prompt uh, with a parrot, something artistic. Um, so uh, here on Prompt Hero, we can find examples for different images, prompts. You can see that uh, parrots are not the most popular topic, so that's a bit of awkward stuff. Um, but I think yesterday I saw one nice picture. Yeah, this one. I like this kind of impressionistic style and let's copy this prompt and let's add it to our stable diffusion. I don't want to add dolphin and cat. I just want to generate a parrot. Blue parrot with red beak sitting on the tree. And I will leave all these um, styles here as it was in the original prompt. And I'll try, I'll set the batch count to four and I'll hit the generate button just to see if our LoRa is going to work. And you see here we have the weight of our LoRa. It is one, it is the maximum, like 100%. So what we can do, we can change this number uh, from zero to one and it will uh, help us to define how much of our LoRa we want to actually apply to the images. So now I used the maximum one, I used one, it's like 100%. And even on the preview, we can already see. So, uh, so we can see the results. And honestly, I'm amazed by results. They're, they're pretty good and that's kind of a first iteration. Um, these first and the last one, they are very good. The second and third, they have some kind of artifacts. We could use them, these two pictures, and they look very much like Dracaris. 
and uh, what if I set it to 0.7 let's try we can still recognize Dracarys in these pictures but they are a little bit different we gave our model a more freedom more imagination to use uh, and what else we can do we can switch to different sampler we can try this earlier A. It is actually a very good sampler for artistic styles. I really like it. I use it for when I need to do some stylization. And when I want to get realistic uh, images, I use this uh, DPM++ uh, SD Kairos. So this is the Euler. And yeah, some of them are good. Like the first one is pretty good. Um, second one added more <laughs> birds <laughs> one bird is a pirate it has only one eye um, yeah so uh, again the first and the last are pretty good and you remember we trained this LoRa for stable diffusion uh, 1.5 uh, but what if we try to use it with some other model for example the dream shaper that I showed you in the last video let's try to switch it and try to generate something in this model okay so we change the model and uh, let's try to generate something with the same prompt first uh, okay dream shaper gave us uh, some broken results so i wonder if it's just uh, this sampler is not very good for this one i'll try with my favorite dpm sd claras and let's see if there will be anything better Okay, the results with this prompt are still a little bit awkward, but I think that it is probably because of these uh, tags in our prompt, so I'll try to remove them. Okay, these parrots are a bit strange. Let's uh, try to change it maybe to 9 and see what will happen. Uh, okay, they are slightly strange. Um, but i think even with these results we could potentially work for example if i choose this one and send it to image to image uh, i like the uh, composition i like the shadows and lightning so i want just to fix it uh, that it's a bit you know uh, wonky uh, so what i'm going to do i will uh, add some sampling steps and I will resize it by two, so it will add uh, more nice details. Uh, and the denoising strength, I'll set it to somewhere like 0 0.4. Um, this image to image tab is very interesting one. And of course, I'll make the separate video about it to show it in more details how to work with that. But now I want just to try to improve these pictures that we got from another model. And you see now it looks much better. Uh, it still has some artifact on the beak and some strange stuff here. Uh, but in general we could improve it. We could just fix these small things and that peak is not that bad. Uh, so what else I want to try? Uh, yesterday I was playing with this model and I created some interesting pictures. Uh, so to save the time I will just use the PNG info and send it to text to image uh, to show you the prompt I was using. Uh, so it was half woman half parrot assassin with wings and feathers highly detailed digital painting art station concept art mate uh, sharp focus illustration and etc etc some styles and of course our LoRa and trigger word so with this prompt we can try to switch to dream shaper and we will try to generate okay so it generated a warrior woman with the wings uh, and the feathers are kind of the same color as the Dracarys feathers but still there is no bird so let's uh, set it to 4, maybe it will work.
Yes, there is a lot of flying women, uh, women, but there is no real one that I want to see. Let's try just Griffon. Uh, okay, these are interesting and I really like the one in the left bottom corner uh, where Dracaris is kind of sitting here with this girl so I'll send this one to image to image and we'll try to improve it a little bit so let's uh, resize it by 2 and denoising strength let's sit, set it in the middle and let's try to generate uh, okay, now we are getting the better version of picture uh, and uh, the only messy part is here with this hand and we could probably try to add bad hands here and then go to generation and, and make the denoising strand a bit more and to see if we're gonna get something interesting okay so the girl is nice but the parrot is a bit broken here I probably will set it a bit more to let the model to change the original picture a bit and you see I like how it changed the clothes uh, here it is kind of a feathered armor uh, when here it was just a textile Oh wow, this one is even more interesting. I'm already curious what else it can do. He has a hand with a parrot. is a real problem here because it can't paint the hand properly. So we could probably add hands to negative prompt. Uh, can here it even uh, added some clothes to a girl girl's hand that's ridiculous uh, okay this one looks quite funny it is like three birds um, okay these clothes are a bit ugly but in general it looks good and I like the background so I will uh, send this picture to uh, image to image again uh, and uh, what I'll do I'll go to in paint and now I'm going just to fix this close and I go in paint masked original and then I'll put here just bird close and I'll try to regenerate it We don't want to resize it by two though, so let's try. Uh, and okay, it is a little bit better now, but still these claws are too big for this bird. Small maybe? Okay, it is still not completely the Dracaris close one. Maybe if we add Laura back, it will make better. Yeah, that's a tricky part when you almost have a perfect picture and you need to fix a little detail. It can take some time. Mm -hmm. But all right, it repainted something. It added a hole to this. Um, thingy and uh, anyway I don't want to waste too much time on this little piece of picture so you can see that if you trained your Laura you can use it with different styles different models and the result can be quite interesting and through uh, several iterations you can get quite um, amazing results I hope this video was useful for you uh, let me know in comments what do you think and uh, if you have any tips and tricks about the Laura training, also share them and don't forget to like and subscribe on my channel. Thank you.